This is Beer in Front, part of the Odd Pods Media Network and the Beer Media Group. Sometimes the beer in front of you is the best one yet. I'll talk to people around the beer world and get their stories all about beer. That's Beer in Front, and it's coming up now. Welcome to episode 215, the June 16th edition of Beer in Front. I'm your host, Dave Zalatoris, and Beer in Front is a proud Odd Pods Media Network member and a charter member of the Beer Media Group. Midwest Coast Brewing Company, located at 2137 West Walnut in the great city of Chicago, is opening their new all-season rooftop with Retractable Roof this Tuesday, June 18th. On today's show, I'll talk with Ryan and Tim from Midwest Coast so you could hear more about this great new project. After we talked, I went to the Soft Open last week, and I'll share my firsthand experience at this one-of-a-kind gem in the Chicago Brewing District. I'm releasing this episode on Father's Day, so for all the fathers out there, Happy Father's Day. If you didn't listen to it a couple years ago, I did a Father's Day episode where I talked to a lot of my friends in beer and podcasting, and they were reminiscing about the beers that their dads drank growing up. So I'll include the link in the show notes if you could check that one out. But that was a lot of fun. I think it was like two years ago I put that out, but that was a lot of fun reminiscing about old school beers like Schlitz and old style beers like that. So give that one a listen. In beer and beverage news, the Kelsey brothers, Jason and Travis, they're now the majority owners of Garage Beer. This was started by Braxton Brewing, They've become really big now. They kind of had that Montucky cold snack vibe where it's, you know, a macro tasting beer, but it's a craft made. So, I mean, I had the garage beer folks on the show last year. I thought it was really good. So, but they have two new owners in the Kelsey brothers. So look for them to be doing a lot of promotions for garage beer coming up. Athletic, they acquired the Ballast Point facility in San Diego, and that's huge. So they're going to be making, it's going to be the second facility they have in San Diego, but now Ballast Point is going to be contract brewed. So I keep saying that needs to be an episode because that's just so wild. Like 10 years ago, you could get Sculpin and like grapefruit Sculpin, and that was 10 years ago, it was $14.99, a six-pack, but you still bought it because it was really good. And then they sold for a billion dollars, and then you had the Kings and Convicts buying it for pennies on the dollar. They closed the big facility in the West Loop that they had. They closed other locations, and now they're just going to be contract brewed. So it's a wild story, but Athletic, they are buying the Ballast Point facility in San Diego. New Amsterdam Vodka and the viral show Hot Ones, they've come out with the new hot pepper infused vodka called Heat Check. Now, I love Hot Ones. I don't know if this is based on the wings of death at the end, but if you like something with a little kick, you could check out Heat Check from New Amsterdam and Hot Ones. If you're a fan of gin, Maplewood here in Chicago is coming out with a new gin called Brewer's Gin. It's a really nice looking bottle, nice green notes on it with the Maplewood logo. But according to the release that they have, this is going to be a citrus forward modern American gin with bright notes of juicy orange and fresh marmalade. This is also going to be finished with mosaic and citra cone hops. So that sounds really interesting to me, and I'll have to go pick up a bottle of this. But if you're a fan of gin, 
check out Brewer's Gin from Maplewood. The Barrel Age program, the Deep Wood series from Revolution is second to none in my opinion. They're going to have one coming out later this year in collaboration with Firestone Walker. This is going to be a barley wine aged in rye whiskey and red wine barrels. So that sounds really interesting. It's going to be called Oakpocalypse Later. So keep an eye out for that later in the year from Revolution and Firestone Walker. And finally, they must have had some new money from ticket sales, but the Ravinia Festival is updating their lawsuit against Ravinia Brewing. There was an article in the Tribune. You know, once again, it's my opinion. I'm not a lawyer. It seems like it's bullshit to me, but, you know, it's not cool. So if you're around, you got to support a great local business and, you know, it doesn't sound good. I mean, you you can't keep paying your lawyers and run a business. So it's not good for Ravinia Brewing. But if you're around in either the Highland Park or the diversity location in Chicago, you know, grab a beer, grab a bite to eat. It's really good. But yeah, they're getting their lawsuits being updated from the damn festival again. Midwest Coast Brewing Company nestled at 2137 West Walnut in Chicago is on the brink of unveiling its much-anticipated all-season rooftop tomorrow, June 18th. This is not just any rooftop. It's a game-changer for the city's taproom scene, has breathtaking views, an extensive selection of beer, and a retractable roof that defies Chicago's weather. It's a spot you cannot miss. Joining me now are General Manager Ryan and Brewery Manager Tim to delve into the story of one of Chicago's finest breweries. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you. We are excited to be here. Thanks for having us, man. Oh, yeah. Anytime. Wait, retractable roof. Who's been playing with the on and off switch just watching this go back and forth? Oh, wow. That's a great question yeah. because the on and off switch is both of our two arms. Uh, it's right. a manual retractable roof. So, oh, all right. It's either Tim on one side and me with a big stick or vice versa. So, <laughs> can you share some details about the new expansion? What can people expect when they step onto the new rooftop starting tomorrow? Yeah. Um, so, basically, we've expanded into our second floor. It's a rooftop that's, like you mentioned, completely enclosed in a glass that can retract back and forth. Um, we pride ourselves on our tap room that we like to think is kind of an elevated tap room experience. And the the second floor is just taking that uh, literally to a different level. So we like to think it's, it's really polished up here. It's got, as you mentioned, just incredible views of the city. Um, currently in the summer months right now, we're surrounded by trees. So it's kind of this green oasis, which is really cool. And on you know, great summer days, we can have it all open air and you just truly feel like you're outside and in this cool uh, oasis on the west side of Chicago here. Yeah, you said you're surrounded by trees. How are the cicadas? Are they popping in to check it out? Uh, knock on wood. No cicadas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, that would, that'd be a mess. I yeah, really that would hope we didn't just jinx ourselves, but yeah, yeah, so far so good. Yeah, that would suck for the grand opening just to get inundated with cicadas falling out of the trees. I'd be lying if I said that wasn't one of our fears. As we yeah. Just being the update here. <laughs> well, I mean, between the pandemic and I'm sure you've been dealing with city permits and all of that nonsense, this couldn't have been an easy project. No, it took uh, quite some time. And, you know, really it, it started with the zoning in our particular neighborhood that, that really kind of delayed us um, working through some of that red tape took a while. And then finally, you know, when we got the red, a green light rather to start the construction project, um, the build itself was actually pretty fast. I think that kind of surprised us both. Yeah, I mean, they came in, they 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 did a little bit of demo, and then I mean, I don't I don't think the construction once the demo was over, I don't think the construction took six months. I mean, I yeah. they, they went they it got nice quick up here. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was basically they broke ground or roof in October and then wrapped up the project in. Uh, you know, late January. So after that, it was just kind of the the process of dealing with the city, which uh, is, you know, it's a very fun process. We'll say that. Yeah. Uh, but we're across that finish line, thankfully. So yeah, it's, but you're right. It hasn't been a long time. 
in the works. Uh, kind of since we opened this space in 2019, we've always envisioned this rooftop and it's been a part of the plan. So just to have it now in 2024 still seems like a daydream a little bit, but uh, we are so pumped to be across the finish line and finally have it open. This is going to come out the day before you open and then the soft open is next week. So I'm really looking forward to checking this out. After this interview on the show, I'll give the full review of the soft open. So, but yeah, I'm really excited about checking it out. The pictures and the renderings look phenomenal. Yeah. I, I think, you know, both of us too are, are shocked at how close it came to looking like the renderings. I think oftentimes those renderings just look so sweet and polished and the hey. finished product can look different, but honestly, the finished product has just blown us away. So we are just pumped to up to see you, man. I'm to open our, our doors to everybody. Do you guys have any new, like, special beers that are coming out for the open? Yes. Yeah, so, um, uh, back in the day when we first opened, uh, they, uh, we, the city required us to have an elevator, even though we didn't have anything on the second floor. Um, and so we named, uh, one of our hazy IPAs, uh, Elevator to Nowhere. Get funny play. People would ask us all the time, like, where's the elevator go? We're like, uh, nowhere. Yeah. Um, but now that it goes somewhere, uh, we named, uh, we made a new beer. We made a double version of the elevator to nowhere, call it elevator to somewhere. Uh, I get those names mixed up all the time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so basically they're really close. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so we have a double version of that. Um, that's going to be an up upstairs exclusive, uh, only on the, only on the rooftop, uh, beer. And then, uh, we got a bunch of beers actually timing out pretty well. We, uh, we should have. Another new kind of just like regular haze. Um, we should have our new American lager. And then we've been pumping out. Uh, we kind of workshopped the Shandy last year. And we brought that back this year. We think that's going to do really well. And it's like two and a half percent. We actually, we, we made the next batch today. Uh, we had to make 100 gallons of lemonade. Uh, and then <laughs> blend it with a beer. So uh, that was fun. It's always a fun day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, so outside of that, so we have, you know, we do 16 beers downstairs, uh, on draft, uh, we're doing 12 upstairs. So most of them are, most of them are going to make, uh, an appearance upstairs with cheese, what we want to do seasonally, you know, maybe not have a lot of stouts up here during the summertime, but wintertime when it's snowing, you know, we might have a couple stouts kind of flowing upstairs. So we'll, we'll see kind of what, how that all works out. Um, but that's, that's what we're looking at now. Cool. Like. The expansion is a new chapter, but Midwest Coast has been putting out some great, exceptional beer for five years. Can you share the story, guys, on you know how this journey began? Yeah. Um, so I actually I was brought on day one back at employee what employee one uh, June of twenty nineteen. Uh, we started brewing uh, first week of July and soft opened the whole month of August and then had a great opening uh, in September. And but yeah, when I, when I came in, uh, I was talking with Cameron, our owner, head brewer, and during the interview process, we were just chatting about beer and kind of realized we both have the same opinion on beer and that we just kind of like beer flavored beer. Uh, <laughs> that's kind of one of our official, unofficial mottos here. We do, like I said, you know, and we make a shandy, you know, we do some fruited variations of stuff, and uh, you know, we do some some different things, but our 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 core focus is just let's make good beer let's make beer styles we want to make and let's make them as good as we can as traditionally as we can uh and and that's just kind of what uh what we've become uh it's always kind of funny we look at uh a lot of different postings and articles we'll talk about like oh they're really known for their german lockers and they're a really good ipa brewery and I'm like i don't really think that we're any of those things mm. uh, but i think we just kind of do i think we offer a wide variety of of options uh, across the whole spectrum of beer from American styles, German, Belgians, Saison, Stouts, IPAs. I mean, you name it. Um, we got a, a California Common rocking uh, in the tanks right now. I mean, that's just kind of, we kind of just, that's what we do. And that's what me and the owner, when we, when I interviewed, that's what we liked. Like, we're just like, we just want to make beer the right way. Saute shortcuts, use, you know, German ingredients for German beers, all that kind of thing. And um, that's just kind of where we've, where we've landed yeah i think that's kind of where i came mm -hmm. into um as the general manager um one of the things that i really liked about this brewery was that there's offering for everyone and that 
um, the brewers didn't want to pigeonhole themselves in a certain kind of style or category. So um, it's important to me running the tap room that everyone who walks through the door, there's there's a beverage for everyone and mm-hmm. that there's a seat at our bar for everybody. Um, and I think that over the last coming on five years now, we've really, really nailed that from beer to staff to the guest experience. Um, I think that this is a place for everyone. And that's really our goal is to ingrain ourselves in the community here in Westtown and um, offer a bar stool for everybody. Like I can't, I can't imagine like who would call you like an IPA brewery or a German right. brewery. I mean, I know you have vaguely stylish and I saw a couple other like IPAs on tap, but you know, I would think you're more known for like a traditional European style. I know you have like brown ales, cream ales out, but yeah, I don't know if I would call you an IPA brewery. Yeah, I don't. It, it's just one of those things where I, I think when people try to, I get, I get why people are. You, you want to say a brewery's good at something, mm-hmm. uh, at, which I get. You know, you got breweries that are good at making German beers, or breweries that are known for their IPAs. But I think we just kind of we're so widespread in what we make; it's kind of hard to pigeonhole us into something. Mm-hmm. So I think people kind of just well, like, well, I like the German beer they make, so they're a good German. Or I like their IPA, so they're, which is kind of a good thing. I mean, that people don't really know what to call us. I mean, for yeah, doing, I think it means we're doing a lot of things well. Um, and that's also just like, like I, like Brian was saying, kind of curate that top list. You can't ever please everybody. Um, but with 16 taps, we're trying not to go heavy on, on certain styles and trying to make sure it's pretty spread out and kind of offer as much as we can with, within reason. Mm-hmm. All right. Who's responsible for friends giving? Cause I need to give that person a hug. That <laughs> is like one of my favorite, if not favorite holiday beers that comes out. Yeah, so we the first iteration of that, um, I think, if I remember right, was, I think Cameron had made that um, in his home brewing days. He wanted to bring it in. Um, and the first time we made it, it was just a traditional American brown. It was about, I think it was like 4.5%. Um, and then still had cinnamon, uh, nutmeg, and orange mm-hmm. peel on it. But kind of after we did that, it was good. But we we kind of sat down one day outside and we were chatting over a beer we were like i was like what if we i kind of want to change this beer up i like where we're going with it and he was kind of he was kind of the same boat and so we kind of ended up kind of just on that like a seven percent call it like a strong ale but it it, it doesn't really have a style Mm -hmm. um i I think it's just kind of it's a seven percent i think strong ale is the best way um because it's still uh kind of english english backbone but it's not it's not a brown ale anymore by any means um, but we think that that kind of bumping that ABV up, and then we added a lot more of the uh, cinnamon, nutmeg, orange peel the second time through as well with that ABV bump. Um, and it just turned out we we're like, this is what we want this beer to be. Uh, it hasn't really changed since then. And I'll say to you, Dave, it's it, hands down our favorite brew day of the year, just per the smells that emit. Oh from yeah, it. I mean it is. Like I send a message out to front of house staff to say if anyone wants to just get into the holiday spirit, be at the brewery this day and duck your head in the brew house because it's just like a blast of holiday spirit it, in your nose. It's amazing. Yeah, we we pull the bags out of the boil kettle and it just it smells awesome. It's a yeah. it, it, it is the best smelling. There are bad smelling brew days, but there are definitely favorites, and that's probably top tier. Oh yeah, you have to send me a note before you do <laughs> it so I could be in the neighborhood. You got it. You mentioned like dialing in that recipe. How often, like when there's an idea for a beer, how often are you like going back, tinkering with the recipe? Has there ever been a time where you just hit it out of the parks, you know, first batch? Uh, yeah, it's actually the first uh, beer uh, Cameron and I collaborated on. So when we opened, Cam had a uh, a few beers that he wanted to make that he had from his homebrew days. Some of those stuck around uh, West Town Brown, um, but that beer has gone through a lot of iterations and changes. It's still the same beer at its core, but we, you know, made some alterations, changed some grain, changed some hops, uh, amounts of hops, just trying to all, you know, trying to perfect it. So that beer has gone through some iterations. But the first beer that Cam and I ever made, he had his six beers he wanted and we were sitting down and he was like, all right, like, what do you want to make? And I was like, I want to make an ESB. That's just my favorite style. And so we sat down, we did our research. We were like, all right, here's the recipe. And uh, that beer hasn't changed in five years. And it's kind of what it was 
probably the first beer that really put us on the map. I think uh, the Brown Ale has actually done a lot of legwork uh, lately, but ESB was kind of our first kind of bread and butter, just like what we were known for. We won the medal uh, GBF in 2020, I believe. And so that was cool. Uh, but that was one uh, we nailed right away. Uh, we just made a Mexican lager. It just ran out um, last week. That was one that everybody said we nailed on the first try. So that was good. I like, I, I'm the tinkerer. Uh, I, I, whenever we make something, I, I'm always like trying to find a way to make it better. And I think I'm I'm never pleased. Uh, I, I always want to try and tweak things. But there are like those two beers are beers that we haven't really messed with. And, and we're like, cool. Like, that's not normally the norm you know that's not what we expect it's what you go for but until you try it and you never know what goes wrong on a brew day or you know yeast is yeast is living organism so sometimes have a mind of its own and it doesn't behave like we would like it to but um it's nice when you feel like you nail one on the first shot oh yeah and especially scaling up from you know a five gallon homebrew batch to a full-scale production yeah there's a lot that could you know go wrong or you know, even if you scale it up perfectly, something's going to be different about it. Yeah, I mean, because I, you know, I back in my homebrewing days again, like five gallon scale, and then uh, I worked at a brewery in Atlanta. It was ten barrels, but I was like an underling, didn't really do a lot of brewing. Did a little bit more brewing on a thirty barrel system uh, before we came here, ten barrel system, and so even then, like scaling in my mind, scaling down, Cameron's mind scaling up. That's always kind of hard too. You got to figure that out. Um, I think too, like. I don't know. One of my favorite parts about brewing the brew process from home brewing to, you know, what we're doing on our level is just the Bob Ross happy accidents that happen. And mm-hmm. uh, should we talk about the uh, hellish auto? Oh, yeah. So, so yeah, that was, uh, we'll throw Kev under the bus a little bit here. Um, so <laughs> That's lead- right. Nobody listens. So, you're yeah, yeah. It's, it's fine. So, our lead, our lead brewer, um, he, we brought him on, uh, I think two or three years ago now. Um, He's awesome. He's the nerd of the group. He knows it. He does our, he runs our, uh, East management, um, which Cam and I were doing before we brought him on. Uh, but he does a lot better job at it than we do. But, uh, we're making our hellish, uh, Holstein Hellas. Um, and I popped into the cooler that day. It was a 20 barrel batch. So we're brewing double brew day. So I popped in the cooler and I'm like, there's no, there's no German lager in here. And so I come back out and I'm like, Hey Kev, what are you uh what are you pitching in that beer today? And he's like, he's like, oh the yeast that we use for Oktoberfest. And I was like, that's like an Oktoberfest yeast. That's not like a German lager specific yeast. And he's like, like they're they're different. Um, and he was like, oh, I thought they were. He's like, I thought they were the same. He's like, I, I didn't realize we used because like the Oktoberfest isn't a yeast that we use a lot. We it's a one off. We use it for Oktoberfest, and that's pretty much it. Yeah. And he was like, oh, I just was going to use that yeast. And I'm like, so do we just not have any German lager yeast at house? And he's like, no. I was like, <laughs> cool. And Cameron had brewed the first batch and had gone on for the day. And so I gave him a call and I was like, so we're going to prop him. Uh, and we're like, well, let's just pitch the German yeast. We'll get some lot. We'll get, uh, well, let's pitch the Oktoberfest yeast. We'll uh, get some lager yeast for the next batch uh, and just kind of call it a day and see what happens came out and it actually came out really well uh it's the same exact as the holstein house the only thing that's changed is the yeast yeah but it gives it kind of that marzany it's like a uh, it's like a, a marzany vibe a little fest little fest beer yeah like kind of lighter in like fest beer but like it's not quite that either um so this kind of we called it a hybrid lager because we didn't know what else to call it yeah um but we had to figure something out we had 20 barrels of, of wort and yeah and, no, we had to we had to get yeast in there somehow. Yeah, or calling up like Omega, like, hey, do you guys have anything I could use? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And they're like, we do tomorrow. We're like, well, we need it today. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so that was that was a happy accident. Uh, don't try to make a habit of those, but uh, it was nice that it worked out for us. Um, so yeah, that was a good. One. That one's uh, I was running low too. Though. That one's about to about to kick the can, and then we can get our our German Pilsner uh, rolling again. Um, we've had it in cans for a while, but it's been, it's been out on, it hasn't been on draft in about six months and okay. people have clamored for it to come back. So you've always been a dog friendly, family friendly spot at Midwest coast. Is this going to continue with the new rooftop or are there any restrictions because of the rooftop? 
Oh yeah, we're. Um, I mean, it's basically the same thing on the second level. It's still family friendly, still super dog friendly. Um, we're trying to ramp up some more dog friendly events and um, just do more stuff in, in terms of that, partnering with local rescues and whatnot. So mm -hmm. um, that's really been our mo since the start. Um, and I mean, I think part of me when I'm interviewing people to join our front of house staff is like, do you like dogs? Is maybe question one or two that yeah. people because it's kind of requirement here. So we're just, we're super dog friendly. And yeah, that's, that's definitely going to be the case on the second floor. Awesome. Yeah. I need, well, mine's kind of leash reactive or else I'd bring her, but yeah, I yeah. love going to breweries, tap rooms that are dog friendly. Yeah. I, I have the same issue. My, my dog, uh, I got her, uh, she turns four this summer and I got her. And when I first got her during COVID, um, uh, I bring her to the brewery all the time and who's mad at it. 10 week old German shepherd greeting at the yeah. door, but she's gotten a little too comfortable at the place. And so when I bring her out about the city, she's awesome. When I take her to other bars, restaurants, breweries, she's great. I bring her here. She's definitely a little at least reactive. So I try to not do that as much. It's, it's her kingdom here. So it is yeah. queen of the castle and she knows it. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like, Hey, like, now you're a full grown German shepherd. You, you can't be a turd. <laughs> yeah. So we, we're, uh, we're here on slower days. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it, it's the dogs here are great. Um, we have a whole program with our mug club that we allow. Um, well, first of all, we learn the dog name first. Uh, and then as we know the humans, we let them pick out a hop and then uh, we'll make an IPA and name it after their dog. So we've done a couple of those uh, yeah. as a little give back to our our mug club regulars. A lot of those kind of helped get us through the pandemic and yeah. they're still around. It's kind of like our dog IPA series. Yeah. Well, we, we get to know the regulars and, and the beers that they like, and um, they get to kind of help shape their own beer, name it after their dog. And we, we feature a photo of the dog that the dog beer is on draft. So right now it's Moxie's Pity Party is the hazy dog IPA we have on right now. Um, Moxie is this pity mix who belongs to one of our awesome bartenders, Holly. And it's Moxie's Pity Party because if you're not petting Moxie, she'll let you know. She just yeah. needs attention. So... <laughs> Uh, but it's an awesome IPA and um, Holly and her husband, Aaron, got to pick out the hops for it. So it's a pretty cool program that really like it helps us bridge the gap between the brew house and, and the bar itself um, and get customers, regulars and staff members involved in the brew process. And then also feature dogs and awesome beer in the meantime. So yeah. that's been a really rewarding program for us. Oh, yeah. You hear that, Moira? If you weren't yeah. such a pain in the ass, you could be on a beer. <laughs> yeah. Love that. Yeah. Now, like, I know you've had, like, food trucks and stuff. Are Is there going to be food now with the rooftop? We're going to amp up some more of those food trucks and food pop-ups. Mm -hmm. um, but right now, it just kind of comes down to the certain kinds of licenses you can get as a brewer in Illinois. Mm -hmm. So um, something that a lot of people don't know, if we were to get a commercial kitchen and become a brew pub, we would have to let go of our self-distribution rights. So, and we'd lose the dogs inside and we'd lose oh, the dogs. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, there's pros and cons, but we're not ready to say bye to, um, the dogs in the tap room quite yet. Um, and from a business perspective, we want to keep that self-distribution. Oh yeah. Possible too. So uh, the Illinois craft brewers guild is awesome and they do a ton of stuff. Ray Stout is awesome too. And, um, they've been making strides to try to make our licenses a little bit more, uh, friendly for just making money, which it would, would seem like it would just be a no-brainer, but not always in the eyes of legislators. So, yeah. So, long story short, yeah, we'll still have food pop-ups and stuff up here, but uh, no kitchen and dogs will still be welcome. Yeah, no, that's weird. I didn't know that about losing your self-distribution. That, yeah, I mean, I, I think that would be like just really like pulling at you from both ends. Like, what do you do? Oh yeah, I, I yeah, we like to say it's. So we don't lose the dogs, but yeah, the piece is the self distribution. Like it's just it's, we make more money when we sell the beer ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, so we still, you know, we we have a distributor out in the suburbs that helps us out for sure. Um, but yeah, it's, it's nice having having that little extra cash flow. Oh yeah, absolutely. Especially with you know the last five years, every you know every little bit helps. Yeah, totally. You know, speaking of distribution, now you're around all around like the Chicago land area. You know, I see you at like bottle shops, like, uh, Bermiscuous, 
bottles and cans. You could be found at Binnie's. Were you at Jewel for a while? Because I thought I remember seeing you at a grocery store. Yeah, so I, if I remember correctly, I think it's we are we're in like ten or so closest Jewels to our location. Okay, um, and so like you're not going to see us in the Jewel on the north side. Mm-hmm. Um, at any of the, I think the Jewels on the west side, I think are, are mostly carrying us. All right, cool. Everywhere, like around the Chicago area, is there any like plans to expand to like other state? Uh, not at the moment. I think we we I think when when we first opened and it was kind of sitting down and planning out kind of a lot of the future stuff with with uh, the owners. Uh, I think there was an idea of you know maybe one day opening a second space. Um, more of a production facility and then maybe trying to become you know a regional brand i think that was what they kind of originally wanted mm-hmm. but i think what we've seen in the beer market over the last five ten years is i think everything's just gone hyper local i think you're seeing a lot of those bigger brands pull back i mean Lagunitas just closed their uh, location out here and and we've actually we've seen it a little bit kind of even in the suburbs where that we did it well when we were new, but now that we've been around as much, uh, and there are so many breweries that are opened out in the suburbs all across Chicago, it's just kind of, everybody wants to drink local and local is getting more and more local. Uh, yeah. You well, know, like, you know, your supper breweries, if you're living in the suburbs, you want to drink the beer that's down the street, not a beer from the big city. Yeah. Uh, so it, it, I think it's, I, I think that's kind of, I think we've teal, uh, kind of pulled back away from that idea of, Coming maybe a regional player one day. Uh, I won't say it won't ever happen, um, but I think just kind of where the market's set now, focusing on kind of the top room space, this new upstairs, and we still have a, a decent distribution. I, I don't think you're ever going to see. I don't think you're going to see us outside of Chicago land anytime soon. Okay, um, but yeah, yeah. I think just like Tim said, just the focus on the local. Like anywhere that I go personally, like I'm reaching for. You know, if I'm I'm in Ohio, if I'm in Washington, Washington State or something, I don't <laughs> want Chicago beer there. You know, yeah. I want whatever, whatever their version of Daisy Cutter is out <laughs> there. So uh, that's certainly the focus. And then um obviously all of our margins, our main margins are made inside under our own roof. So the more sales that we can drug up in the tap room, that's the better for us. So that's <laughs> also why we're expanding into this massive rooftop space. So yeah, and you know, we mentioned in the intro to retractable roof so if the weather's lousy outside you could still head over to midwest coast guys i want to thank you so much i'm really looking forward to checking this out at the soft open and i'll hopefully see you guys there once again they're located at 2137 west walnut in the city of chicago you need to check it out midwest coast brewing company great beers i'm a big fan Guys, thank you so much. Dave, thank you. We really appreciate it. Yeah, man. Thanks for having us. It's fun. Oh, anytime. Hey, and once this is done, can you guys like get to work on the Bears? Like, can you help out and get the stadium <laughs> done for the Bears? We'll start on their rooftop, too. Yeah. All right. <laughs> perfect. We'll be, uh, maybe we'll be the sole beer supplier. That'd be nice. That, yeah. That, <laughs> there you go. Perfect. All right, guys. <laughs> thank you so much. And uh, I'll see you in a couple of days at Soft Open. Sounds good. Aww. Thank you, Dave. If you like fun, then you're going to love the Beard Out podcast. It's a podcast where we talk about two of the greatest things in the world, beer and Weird Al. And frankly, we talk more about Weird Al than anything because he's the gift that keeps on giving. So join us as we talk through Weird Al's career, what he means to us, and we have some very special guests on to discuss the magic. That is Alfred Matthew Yankovic. Weird Al, part of the Odd Pods Media Network. Oh, once again, I want to thank Ryan and Tim from Midwest Coast Brewing Company for coming on. That was a lot of fun talking to them. And then after we talked, I went to the soft open of the new rooftop over at Midwest Coast, and it was outstanding. I mean, easy to get to for me. I'm right down Western, so it was just a straight shot down Western Avenue, but really cool facility the downstairs bar which is actually the first time i've been to the downstairs bar the downstairs bar 
is awesome as well. But then you go up to the rooftop. When we got there, it was a little warm, so they had it closed initially um, just to keep the AC going. But really cool, good views of the city, well spaced out, so you're not cramped. There's a lot of room to like move around. You're not right on top of each other. I thought it was really good. They had all of their beers there to try, which I tried a couple of them, and I have some that I'm going to talk about later on the show. But I wanted to try a couple things that were different. And, you know, they have great beers, but I wanted to try the Shandy because I'm like, all right, it's 2.5%. I could have a couple of these. And when you think of Shandies, you think of Line and Kugel. But this, this was a raspberry lemon. It's called Fine and Shandy. This was absolutely fantastic. Like I had a couple of these great flavor. You get the raspberry, you get the lemon. So this was something that definitely in the summer, I would grab a couple of those. That was really good. They also have other offerings. They have some NA beers there. If that's your thing, they had guest cider from Eris. So, you know, it's nice to see supporting other local places. So if you'd like cider, you could pick up one from Eris. They also had a seltzer that, you know, some people have gluten issues. So they had a seltzer called Eventually Someday, which was strawberry and watermelon. I loved that as well. I thought that was extremely tasty. I had more strawberry than watermelon, but, you know, I also had a couple other, you know, I had a sour, I had the shandy before. So my taste buds could have been off, but like that was, I thought was a phenomenal seltzer. That's something I would buy in six packs if I were to see that. Their Hellas was outstanding. The Cream Ale 3 from the T is excellent. Outside of, they have a double dry hop beer that they were talking about earlier called Elevator to Somewhere. That checks in at 8%, but everything else is reasonable. So you could definitely have more than one beer when you're there, but you have to go check it out. It's a great facility, great views. You know, in the middle of the night, like when we were there, this was from six to 10, they opened up the roof and it was just really cool. So you get the fresh air. It's a great spot. You need to hit up Midwest Coast. I need to thank them for inviting me to the soft open. And thank you to Rachel who set all of this up. All right, the first one I'm going to have from Midwest Coast is their West Town Brown. This is an American brown ale, 5.3% alcohol. They use Columbus and Willamette hops, 33 IBUs on this. I love a brown ale. Remember, I mean, if you're younger than I am, then forget about it. But when craft beer started, everyone had a brown ale, and I'm glad that Midwest Coast has this one out. So let's bust open the West Town Brown. Really good color on here. The color is brown, but looks nice. Good foam here. Really get that nice malty aroma here. You get like some toffee out of this. Smells really good. Oh yeah. How does everyone not have a brown ale out? And why, why did these stop becoming popular? This is so good. I mean, you think of it or you look at it and you think, oh, this could be heavier than it is. It's only 5.3%. Excellent beer. Really get the nice malt notes there. You get the toffee. You get sweetness. Like maybe, is it caramel? Let me have another sip. Yeah, like a toffee, caramelly type uh, taste to that. I don't know if caramelly is a word, but it is now. But I think it tastes really good. There's a little bitterness from the hops. Not a lot, but you kind of get it at the back end. This is excellent. Like, this is something that should be in my refrigerator all the time. It's that good. And also, while I'm talking, I do want to say that the guys at Midwest Coast hooked me up with the beer. 
Normally, like 95% of the beer I have on this show, I buy myself, but they were kind enough to give it to me and not take my credit card. So, but I would drink this regardless. This is that good. I think it's an excellent beer. If you see it around, it's in a nice dark brown can, gold font on here. It's a great tasting beer, great looking beer. If you see Midwest Coast's West Town Brown, you have to put it in a cart. It's excellent. All right, the next one that I'm going to have from Midwest Coast, this is their hazy session IPA called Dune Surfer. The can is gorgeous. Like, they need to submit this to the Crushy Awards. I love this can. It doesn't list anything on there, and I went on the Midwest Coast website, and I didn't see this one listed, so I can't tell you the ABVs, but it's a session, so I'm assuming it's under 5%. But the can looks great, so let's crack open Dune Surfer. Dune Surfer looks really nice. It's very light in color. Good foam here. No, big notes. Big notes out of the aroma. I think I'm getting some, like, stone fruit out of this. It smells really nice. That's really good. Yeah, definitely you could tell it's a it's a session, so it's lighter. This is something you could, you know, crush a couple of these. I like the flavor of this a lot. You do get all those hops right up front. I don't get a lot of malt here. I'm mostly getting the hops, but it tastes really good. I get a little malt now, but I like this. I think this is good. And so everything I've had from them is good. You know, I talked about it on the intro with the regular beers that I had there. I had the sour, I had the seltzer and, um, in the shandy. So everything is good. And even their hazy game is top notch as well. So if you see this one around, it's a beautiful can. You've got the silhouette of the Chicago skyline on here. You've got the lake, you know, because we're all into like dunes and surfing in here because, you know, that's what we do in Chicago. But no, if you see the can, put it in the car. This is another winner from Midwest Coast. All right, that's going to wrap things up for this edition of Beer in Front. I thank you very much for listening. Once again, I want to thank Ryan and Tim from Midwest Coast Brewing Company for coming on and inviting me to the Soft Open. You could find them at 2137 West Walnut in Chicago. Great location, great beers. I think it's a spot you need to hit in Chicago if you're visiting or if you're local. You gotta go. and You just have to. Thank you so much for listening. Next week, I'm going to have my friend Aaron Fitzpatrick. You may know him as Fitz Magic Eats on social media. We're going to talk about food in the city of Chicago, and we're going to share a beer as well. So look for that next week. Have a great week, everyone. Happy Father's Day. And remember, sometimes the beer in front of you is the best one yet. <laughs>